couple guys have asked me about specifics of what I use to install the Megasquirt Edis and Coil on Plug on my Jaguar uh, Series 3 XJ6. So um, here it is, here we go. Um, first of all, you're going to have to have a Megasquirt, that's pretty obvious. And I used a Megasquirt 2, uh, which I assembled from a kit. Um, it was very interesting, fun to do. Um, so next, you need a pair of Edis 6 ignition modules. Um, if you want to do the coil and plug thing, you need a pair of them. If you want to go uh, just with the regular uh, Edis type coil pack, then you, of course, you only need one. And of course, that, that's not what we're doing here. Okay. Also, uh, these six ignition coils, uh, I used um, coils from a 2000 Jaguar S-Type V8. Uh, the V6 works. Uh, the, uh, electrically, it works fine, but the um, the ear is straight instead of curved, and I need the curved ear to use with my mounts. You also need a 36 minus 1 ignition timing wheel of some sort, a crankshaft position sensor. Um, I used a 92 Ford Explorer V8 version, uh, standard part number PC14. Chose it because of the mounting ears um, and also uh, the standard Bosch connector. Also, you need a throttle position sensor. Uh, one I use is a Bosch 0280122001. Uh, it's from a Saab. I'll give resources later to where you can find it. And inlet air temperature sensor, I just use simply a second coolant temperature sensor in my inlet air track. It seems to work fine. And you're going to need uh, miscellaneous wires, fuses, connectors, and other hardware. Um, all this information about what you need is available in the Mega Manual, uh, which is just a marvelous thing. It's just really cool. Uh, lots of stuff to be learned about fuel injection and how it works in, uh, in the Mega Manual. And you can use your existing injectors and um, uh, fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, fuel lines, all that stuff can all be reused. Um, and also the coolant temperature sensor can be reused. The auxiliary air valve, you can use it. It's a mechanical thing. It works fine. But as we all know, the Jaguar XJ6 has a tendency to, um, it has idle problems if you have an automatic transmission and air conditioning. and since I have neither, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. But if I had it, I think I probably would use the uh, idle air control uh, settings in the Mega Squirt because it'll operate a um, a stepper wheel, you know, to control to keep your idle even. This is a very cool thing too. Um, also, uh, the Cold Star components, um, the Mega Squirt has uh, software settings to provide for starting, uh, but I connected these up anyway, and it, it seems to work fine. Uh, O2 sensor. Um, you can use a standard sensor, it works good, but uh, the wide band, I changed mine to a wide band so I could read the uh, mixture in real time in Tuner Studio. Here we go. Uh, first of all, of course, is the Mega Squirt. I got mine obviously from DIY AutoTune, and um, um, it's a kit and um, works beautifully. Really cool. Okay, and here. Um, pair of 86 modules. If you're going to do the coil unplug thing, you'll need two of them if you did it the way I did it. I think there's many other ways to do it. It can be done. I thought Mike could just build a, uh, a buffer board or something, but this was cheaper and, uh, and it works really nicely. And this is how I mount my coils. This is a 716 fine threaded bolt. Um, it's screwed down into the air injection rail holes. And of course, my air injection hasn't worked in probably, you know, like 20 years, so uh, it's no big deal. So I just drilled a hole, tapped a 1032, so I could put a 1032 uh, machine screw down in here to hold the coils in place. And this is the way one of them mounts. And then and this is the way the other one mounts. And this one requires a, um, an extra little bracket to be made to hold the coil. And they look like this on the car. This is an early prototype thing that I was uh, when I was first working on how to do it, and then here it is. Um, just a pair of them on the car in a running condition, and here has all six of them. You see, there's um, this one has a little bracket. And this one does not. It screws directly into the into the 716 bolt. Next <coughs> is the crankshaft position sensor. Um, like I said, I chose this one because it has these mounting ears here and here, and also down here the Bosch connector, which is just a standard connector, which you can readily available, easy to find, no problem. So 
I had to saw off this part, which I have no idea what its function was on the, on the Ford. And also remove this little pointy thing, which I also have no idea what its function was on the Ford either. And you end up with a thing that looks like this. Here's the ears. Cut this piece off. Cut that piece off. And here is my mount. Uh, this uh, this is two pieces of quarter inch, um, just a little flat aluminum bar stock. And I um, I made it out in two pieces so that this part here actually rotates to um, so I can get the alignment with this even. If you just mount it straight to the back bar back here, it doesn't align evenly with the uh, with the wheel. And here's another shot of it. These are obviously just little pieces of pipe because I need some kind of standoff. And then um, <clears throat> here it is with the sensor mounted on it. The, um, the timing wheel just mounted it on the bolts that go into the harmonic balancer. And you need to put spacers back here to space the wheel away from the front pulley. Because if you don't, uh, you can warp the wheel when you tighten it down. Plus, you, um, it, it doesn't, doesn't tighten everything down. So you really need these spacers back here. That's important. And also, you have to enlarge these holes slightly uh, for these 5 16 bolts. And here it is assembled. Next is the throttle position sensor. Um, the car originally comes with a throttle position switch, uh, which is not usable um, for, the, for the Mega Squirt. You need a potentiometer. And this one uh, is a Bosch. It comes from a Saab. Um, as you see, it's, it's actually clocked differently from the standard one because the standard one mounts here and here, and I had to clock it around to mount here. Plus, it doesn't, it's smaller, and it doesn't have the little nose piece on it uh, like the other one does, like the original one does. So you need a spacer plate. So I made mine out of a piece of a quarter inch, I'm um, sorry, half inch aluminum. So I just spaced it out half an inch and clocked it around, and it, it works fine. The, uh, uh, the throttle shaft uh, input to the uh, sensor is the same as it was originally. Here is my wiring diagram. Basically, if you look at it, you see that I have two EDIS systems set up in parallel. Everything gets the connections just go to the two of them. Uh, here's the, the VR sensor. See, it's just paralleled out to the two. And here is uh, the output from the Mega Squirt on pin 36. This is the timing output from the Mega Squirt. It goes into pin 3 on both of the EDIS modules. And I use only the, the output um, of the EDIS 1 into the Mega Squirt to get the, uh, the VR pulses into it. So, <coughs> uh, so this goes in pin 24. This is the input. Time, the timing comes out on pin 36. It operates both EDISes. And it's just, it works beautifully. Um, I've got these set up so that it operates uh, coil. One of them operates coil 4, 5, and 6, and the other one um, 1, 2, and 3. So it's still a wasted spark system, so you can set this up um, and you can have 6, 2. I'm sorry. It, it, anyway, you can set it up on odds, or you can set it up on like on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It doesn't matter because these two coils fire at the same time, these two coils fire at the same time, and these two coils fire at the same time. Um, if you want to operate the tack, which most people would, uh, you can operate off of pin 2 on EDIS 1. Uh, the output of this is a series of pulses riding on the DC level. Um, the jag tack doesn't like the DC level, so you have to remove it. So you just uh, connect a wire here, put you a, a capacitor in series with your tack, and connect the other side up to that white with blue wire um, that goes out to the tachometer inside the car. Uh, I used a 0.47 microfarad or 470 nanofarad um, polyester capacitor, but I think most any fairly large capacitor would work. Um, I wouldn't use an electrolytic. I don't think they're very happy under the bonnet. So, uh, but the polyester is fine, works good, and um, and the tack works beautifully. And here are what where I found the parts, the resources. Um, I don't work for any of these guys, but uh, this is where I bought them all, and, and very satisfied in every case. It always works fine. Uh, these guys here have that Bosch sensor, and I'm sure you might can find it elsewhere, but they had it, and 
Um, Rock Auto is good for just about anything that you need. Uh, so, and the Mega Manual, it's like the Bible. So you read it, and it uh, uh, points you, it tells you how to do just about everything. So very good. Okay, that's about it. So if you have questions, you can get in touch with me. Let me know. I'd be glad to answer anything you want. So if anybody's interested, that's it. Y'all take care. Stay cool.